Uh, okay, good morning. So we cannot wait more, so let us start. Uh, yeah, I'm supposed to solve the homework problems. So the first problem, as you see, let us read it here. Uh, consider the following figure. So you have a right angle triangle. This number is given to you, 1.84 centimeters, and then these angles are given. The point is to find this H. Yes? Use the information given on the figure and GeoGebra available here on exam.net to find H. Express your answer in centimeters and to three decimal places. Okay, so let us start doing it here. Okay, so uh, I put here alpha and beta. Of course, the information is here because I prefer to solve problem algebraically and then put the numbers at the very end. Because if you start, for example, uh, if you need tangent of 34 degrees, say, if you calculate tangent 30 degrees, 4 degrees by uh, GeoGebra right away, of course that will be an approximation. And if you do this approximation for 43 and then subtraction, things like that, you are accumulating the errors. Of course, if you are comfortable with doing that, it doesn't matter that much. But, but if the function is exponential, it really matters. Okay, so I prefer to solve the problem algebraically with letters alpha, beta, and d, and find h in terms of alpha, beta, and d, and after the formula is found for me algebraically, then I put the numbers in GeoGebra, and then it would be just one approximation to the whole thing. Yes, that would be better. So let us do that. Okay, so you know this is the unknown. I know that d is given, alpha and beta are given. Okay, so and unfortunately you know that you cannot write some tangent alpha here because this is not a right angle triangle. I can use trigonometry in a right angle triangle, so I have two of them. One of them is the bigger one and one of them is BCH. Okay, so, and then I want to somehow, of course this is not a completely adjacent to alpha, but it is not Hypo hy uh, hypotenuse neither, yes, either. So what should I do? It's better to start with tangent alpha. Probably the best one is cotangent alpha, but cotangent we haven't studied formally here, so we start with tangent. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, okay? So let us start with this one in the bigger triangle. So I would say that in the bigger triangle, so let me write with black. In the bigger, uh, bigger triangle A, B, H, I write tangent alpha, so tangent alpha is a given number to you, because alpha is given, okay, so you should have this in the back of your head, is equal to the opposite side, which I can show it with little h, yes, and then divided by adjacent, what is the adjacent here? From a to h, yes, okay, and then do you agree that I can write capital AH here? I can swap these two, yes? So it becomes h over tangent alpha. Is that part understandable? Yes? Okay. And I will do the same thing for beta. The problem is more or less solved, yes? Because if I found a h, if I could find a h, and if I can find b h, the subtraction of them is exactly d. And the good news is that I have d, so I can somehow use this piece of information. Uh, effectively. So I would go to the other triangle, the triangle, oh, I made a mistake here, yes? This is ACH, the bigger one. So now I go to this a smaller one, BCH. So what do you think I will write? Tangent beta, beta is equal to what? Little h, but this time divided by BH. And then you see that what is BH? B h is equal to uh, little h divided by tan beta, yes? So be careful. Here, a h is not known, b h is not known, little h is not known, but tangent alpha and tangent beta, don't let these things distract you. These are just numbers, given numbers, because alpha and beta are given. But we also know we have to use this information somehow. Of course, immediately, if you compare it here, what can I write for d? D, on the one hand, uh, is 1.84, on the other hand, is equal to what? Yes, D is this bigger uh, segment minus this, uh, minus, sorry, minus this is smaller one, yes? So this D is actually AH minus what? 
BH. But now, D is given, so we are not worried about this. AH and BH can be written using this formula. So instead of AH, I can write H divided by tan alpha. Instead of BH, I can write H tan beta, and then subtract. Yes? But the point is that you don't get confused here. The problem is solved, yes? For example, if I give you 3H minus 2H, what do you do? Here you subtract. Let me write 5H minus 2H. You immediately write 3H. That is the same problem. It is extremely important to understand what I am doing here is exactly what I want to do here. But sometimes people can answer this immediately, but they have trouble understanding this. Do you see this? They are the same problems. Why? Because tangent alpha is a number, and h over num this number, so this can be viewed as one over, for example, two h. Yes, because tangent alpha is a number, like two, and then for example, tangent beta is a number. Let us say three. Okay. If you can solve this problem, in principle, you should be able to solve this problem. For example, here, if I ask you what is this, you immediately answer 3H. If I ask you here, it might be you cannot immediately answer, but you know what to do, what you do here. You just write H and ask yourself, if I do this, what will happen? Yes? Okay, so here you can answer very quickly. Here it takes a few seconds to answer, but that's the same. But I want you to understand this a structure in mathematics that is exactly the same. So here, in principle, means that you factor h out and then see that what happens to the coefficients. I will do the same thing here. That is important to understand that for a person who is a little bit experienced, there is no difference between this expression and these simple expressions. And that is a skill that you should develop and learn. Okay? So what I'm doing here now? I factor h out, it becomes 1 over tan alpha minus 1 over tan beta and then h. But don't uh, lose the track of your logic, yes? So what is my uh, point? My point is to find h. Can I do that now? Yes. Because these know, this is a number at the end, like 7, 10. Okay, so 10h is equal to d. If I ask you, can you find h, immediately you divide by 10. But here, if I ask you what h is, what do you do? You divide the left-hand side by this coefficient, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. So it becomes d, 1 over tan alpha, minus 1 over tan beta. Is that right? So that is the algebraic formula for this one. And then it is also good to know 1 over tan is usually called cotan. Okay, so you can, if you want to, you can write it as d cotangent alpha minus cotangent beta. But you don't need to do that, so you just stop here. Okay, and then at the very end, I now go and use GeoGebra actually to uh, calculate that. So what should I do? I have to type d, which is 1.84, yes, and then divide it by 1 over... Uh, which tangent of which, which angle is that? Uh, Alpha is 34. Am I right? Yes. Yes, 34. And you know that in algebra view, it's automatically in degree mode. So don't worry about that. Oh, sorry. I have to come front of it. And then 1 divided by tangent of 43. Yes. This is by four decimal points. Yes, so I go here and change it to three decimal points. Of course, this is easy to even round it yourself, but that is the answer that you're supposed to write here. 4.486 centimeters. Three decimal points means three digits after decimal point. Okay, not totally three decimals, three points. Is that understandable? Okay. But now, Abdurrahman is actually absent now, but I want to solve this problem analytically now, because I want to use his idea to solve this problem. I was thinking that that would be a good idea if we do this as well. It is instructive sometimes to solve one problem in different ways. You can also find your own way. Analytically solving this problem is also very helpful 
So let me set up a coordinate system. Okay, so let me take this the origin and then put the x-axis here. And the y-axis here. Yes? And then what happens? This point is the intersection point between these lines. If I can find the, coor the y coordinate of this point, I am done. Do you agree the y coordinate of this point is the same number h that I'm looking for? Mm -hmm. Because in this coordinate system, y coordinate of this point is exactly this height that I'm looking for. So another way to see this problem, which is also important to know, is solve the problem analytically. So now I want to concentrate on finding an equation for this blue line and finding an equation for this black line and then find the intersection point and read the y coordinate which is exactly the height I am looking for. It is instructive really to solve this problem this way. Okay, now my question for you. This we discussed last time. Can you write the equation of this blue line? Okay, I, I'm, I'm trying to hear from you. So we don't need this one. If you don't mind, let me clean it up. So how can I find the equation of that line? I don't know how many of you remember. Let me just review. You might be you haven't seen that. The people who had lesson with me, they know that. And so we have the equation of a line like this, yes? This is the k value. So there is also an alternative way. So if I give you this slope, and I, if I give you another condition that helps you to find m, then you can find the equation of your line. It can also be proven that an equation, this is also good, it is always in the formula sheet, and I really recommend you in this course at least, to try to use this formula as much as possible. So if I ask you what is this, this is the equation, this is an equation for this straight line with this slope k passing through the point with coordinates x0 and y0. Okay, so this is good to know. So for example, if I have a line, the k value is k, and let us say that one of these points is a with coordinates x0 and y0. If that happens, this is important to know. Of course, you can do it, do it yourself using this formula and then find m. But it is very important for this course, at least, to remember that this is a better way of writing an equation for a line whose slope is given and one point is also given. If you have problems with understanding this, I will explain it later. But let us take it for granted, okay? So if I give you a point on the line and I give you k value, you put those numbers here, here, and there, what you get is the equation of your line. Okay, so now let us go back there. If I want to find the equation of the blue line AC, I need two pieces of information. One, I need the slope. Second, I need a point that I can read its coordinates. Point is very clear. What is that point? It's the origin. The origin. Okay, so here the point is completely clear, A, 0, and 0. But do you remember what we talked about the slope last time? It's tangent. The slope is tangent of that angle that the line makes with the positive direction of the x-axis. It is important, don't forget this, because that's one vital piece of information. Okay, so the slope of that line, line AC, is what? Tangent alpha. Okay, for the second line, BC, which point of that point uh, of that line is easy to read? Its coordinates. Yes. B is B, yes, B itself. Can you read the coordinates of B? Because B lies on the x-axis in my setup. So the y coordinate is zero, and the x coordinate is D. Or let us write the number here because I want to use GeoGebra. So let me write here one point eighty. Is it four? Yes. And what is the k value? Do you remember tangent of beta? So it is tangent of beta. Okay, now if I ask you what is an equation for AC, you use that formula. What do you write? Y minus Y naught is equal to k tangent alpha 
times x minus x naught, which is zero. And if I simplify that, it, if you don't mind, let me write x on the left side. Yes? This is an equation of your line. Equation of this line, y minus y naught, y naught is still zero, so don't write it. K value is tangent beta. And then x minus 1 comma 84. So that is your equation. Yes? Okay, now we go to GeoGebra. I try to do it a different way. Okay, so what I do, I will draw those lines using GeoGebra, but now I know what is alpha. So I write y equals to, I need graphic view here now. So y is equal to tangent, tangent uh, 34, and then hopefully multiply it by x. This is your line. This black line is your line. Understandable? Now I draw the other one. So y is equal to, what should I type? Tangent, oops, sorry, tangent. Uh, I don't know why this is happening. Okay, tangent of 43. Yes, and then a pair of brackets, x minus 1.84. Yes, and press enter. And if you don't mind, let me change the color of this one. Yes, so I will change the color here, for example, to this. And then I will have two uh, problems, yes? Uh, two lines. Now I want to find the intersection point. So use this one to scroll it a little bit here. Do you agree that this is my point C? For, for, is it understandable for everyone? So I need to find the intersection point. So I go to intersect and I click here and I click there. And this is your Y value. Yes, 4.486 exactly as we got before. But these are two completely different ways of solving the same problem. Yes. Here I am using analytic geometry, coordinate systems and things like that. The other way was just trigonometry in the right angle triangle. Yes, is that understandable? So that's also another way to do the same problem. Questions? Okay, now let us go to this problem. A triangle ABC is right angle triangle and A is given to be 90 degrees. We want to know a little bit about that combination. I have a fraction sine b plus cosine c divided by sine c plus cosine b minus tangent of a over 2. Okay, so if I go for example here, I have mentioned here five options are true and the options are here. So we want to see which options. We have to choose all of them. Okay, so how should we do that? First of all, do you have any problems here? No. no. What is that? It is because you say A is 90. This means divide A by 90. Okay? Sorry, divide A by 2. So it is 90 divided by 2 is 45. And tangent 45 is famous. We did it when we were having the lesson. Do you remember tangent 45 was exactly 1? So there is nothing to do for doing for this. So if you don't mind, let me start writing here, and I would say that the question mark is equal to, I have a fraction line, but I know that this should be minus 1. Okay. I don't know. There are different ways of doing it. Do you remember we B and C are complementary? Because A is 90, so B plus C is 90 as well. So sine of one of them is equal to the cosine of the other one. So it doesn't matter how to do it. For example, let us decide. I keep sine. This is one way. That is why we have a lot of options. I have sine b, but instead of cosine c, what can I put? Sin b. Again, sine b. Okay. And then here, instead of sine c, I can put cosine b. You might say, why do you do it in this order? No, you can do some trial and error. Okay. I have to decide. I have to make my mind to do something. So here, I decided to switch cosine of C to sine of B, but this is, this is possible because they are complementary. Here, I decide the other way around. So I will write cosine B. You know, 
as, as soon as I decide about the numerator, I would say that if I want to come to a conclusion, this is inevitable. I have to do it in that way, okay? So then what happens, I continue one more step. Sine B plus sine B is what? 2 sine B. And cosine B plus cosine B is 2 cosine B. And then I have minus 1. So then you know that these two and that two are gone. But you know that sine B cosine over cosine B is tangent B. And then I have minus 1. So at least we got one of these answers, yes? So tangent B minus 1 is one possible answer. Immediately you can read another one if you remember something. If I have two complementary angles, sine of one of them is equal to the cosine of the other one and vice versa. And what we learned about tangents? Tangents are reciprocals. Okay, so this is also a good option. Because tangent B and tangent C should be reciprocal. So instead of tangent B, I can put 1 over tangent C. So that is also an option. Okay. What else do you think will be the option? For example, you can probably make sure that this is not an option. Yeah. Even though some people have chosen both of them, I still I don't understand how. Yes? Because if you already know that this is the answer, simultaneously it cannot be the answer. Okay? And, yeah. And for example, this one is not the answer. Yeah? Uh, this one is not the answer. Yes? So that was more or less. There are things that we have to be careful. Two options are related to a size of sides, not angles. So we'll talk about that later. But do you think, is this true? This is true? What can you, how can you evaluate that? So if I go here, before doing it like this, in principle, I can do it like this, you know, because when I came here, I simplified and then wrote this to be tangent, but I can keep it in that way, yes? But now look, can I take sine B and write cosine C, Yes. but keep cosine B the same? Yeah. Yes or no? Yes. Because sine B is equal to cosine C. So there's another option now. Which one is that? Cosine C, cosine B is also true. And I can do it the other way around. I can do it what? Instead of a, a keep sine B, but instead of cosine B, I write sine C minus 1 is also there. So that's also a correct option, yes? That's also a correct option. Okay, and I think you understand that 0 is not a correct option, yes? And then tangent B is not a correct option. These two we have to investigate. Okay, do you think any one of them is true? Yes. Yes, which one? This one. Yeah, and that is also clear. Why? Because I don't know. Let us start from one of these things. Okay, so what should I do? If this is my triangle, and this is 90 degrees, and here is B, here is C, the, of course, the convention, if it is not mentioned, they are following the convention. So this is little a, this is little b, and this is little c. So what can I write for tangent b? Tangent b is opposite. Yes? Is b over c. This is your tangent b. And put it back in this formula, which we know is correct. So another way of writing the question mark, instead of tangent b, you put b over c, and then minus 1. That's the correct one. So it already tells you that this is not the correct option. But why this is also correct? Because you can write B, C. Instead of 1, you can write C over C. And the denominators are the same, so you can write B minus C over C. So that is also another option. Is that right? 1, 2, 3, 3 4, 5. So there are 5 more options. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Understandable? So, okay, I will, I will uh, I've uh, made the video for this, I will upload this in the future. But take the homework seriously if you are really interested in getting BNA. So BNA, the people who want to get BNA, they uh, have to take the homework seriously, not weekly problems. Weekly problems are just for the people who are really interested to solve harder problems. Any questions? And uh, No questions? No. Okay.
Uh, yes, thank you. For this one, thank you, but then I will stop recording.